It's the state of local digital media. I am Mel Taylor of MelTaylorMedia.com. This session is focused on digital agency services. That's right. Local newspaper, TV, and radio, and some online-only companies, they are offering more than just print ads. They're offering more than banner ads and broadcast spots. They're offering the local business community a whole bunch of digital agency, digital marketing services like design, web development, email marketing, social media, SEO, SEM. It's a brilliant idea. Digital agency services. We've got some great case studies for you. Some folks doing it well. Some other media companies not doing it as well. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. But let me ask you what your profession is. When somebody says, hey, what do you do? Hopefully you're not saying, well, I'm a newspaper guy. I'm a radio person. Mel, why do you ask? That's not really your profession. What I mean by that is go way back. I mean, way back. This guy right here, King Leonidas, King of Sparta, he led these 300 guys. They were more than just soldiers. They knew what their profession was. You, there. What is your profession? I'm a potter. And you, Arcadian, what is your profession? Sculptor, sir. And you? Blacksmith. Spartans! What is your profession? Another way of talking about what your profession is, is taking a look at it as a core business. What is your core business? Why do you exist every day? Is it because you're in the core business of newspaper production or broadcasting or journalism or programming or content creation? Or you think you're in the communications business? Oh, Mel, I see what you're saying. We're in the advertising business. These aren't totally wrong answers, but the number one core business that we're all in we're in the business of enabling commerce. we got to make sure that local business person succeeds so they can subsidize our content creation. Step number one, we got to make sure the local business makes money because if they don't succeed, they're not going to support our newsrooms, our content creation. That's how we can help the local community stay informed. We can't help the local community if we are not getting paid by the small businessman, huh? We got to stay the number one source of local information. And the only way to do that, we have to have cash flow. A majority of it comes from the small and mid-sized business community. And we are the number one source of local information, both online and offline. Print's not going away, even though some might be saying that. Print is dead? Not really. It's only dead the way it's been done in the past that no longer applies to today. So, so long, Newsweek. Print is not dead. Some people might think that digital is first and just turn off your, your printing press. That is foolish. When you shut down your presses, you become another faceless.com. You don't want to do that. Angie's List, great online program and platform uh, showing consumers how to find the right contractor. She was smart. She realized she had a real business here. And what did she do? She printed a glossy magazine. Some of us call it reverse publishing. The web's a great place to experiment with content and advertiser support before you run the presses and start putting out publications like this one from Angie's List. You got to protect that local business relationship. You lose this. The world's greatest writers, the world's greatest journalists, and your greatest content will never see the light of day. You know, over 30 each month, over 30 advertising sales reps approach your client every single month. Are you protecting that relationship with that client? Do you know who those 30 competitors are? Could be the Yellow Pages or Yellow Book. They're knocking on the doors of your client. Maybe it's somebody from Reach Local. Could be somebody from Constant Contact because, you know, they're more than just email. They're doing events and helping you set up events, social media, email, local deals. Helping you with listings? Are you aware that Constant Contact totally reinvigorated their business going after your client? Even American Express provides small business interactive services. 
435 Digital from Tribune, a full-service digital agency in the same building as the newspaper. Out in Santa Rosa, California, the PD Media Lab, the Press Democrat also offering digital services to small business. Local Edge, the new project from Hearst, they're doing a good job rolling this thing out. If you don't want to buy a print ad, that's fine. We're going to sell you a variety of digital marketing services. And the beauty of it is you retain the relationship with the advertiser. You sell them the social media marketing stuff, the SEO, the web design, the development, the email opt-in stuff. You want to control that relationship. And guess what? You can upsell them or backsell them back into print. And these guys, some of those in the newsroom might think that Patch is dead. But Patch, while they might have maybe struggled a bit with content, um, they really built up their sales, and they've overhauled how they approach the small business. Today, we have our Pleasanton, Dublin, Main Street U. We do an overview about all the different kinds of social media that are out there. We talk about how businesses can improve their presence on social media and how they can improve their presence on Patch. Well, it started with a phone call from the Patch sales and marketing team. I was running for re-election as mayor. People saw the ads. They were very, very specifically targeted to the types of news stories that Patch was running. Hi, I'm Dr. John Kasowitz, president of Rhode Island Orthodontic Group. We're an orthodontic group practice with five offices on the west side of the bay. We discovered Patch just from clients coming in and telling us about it. So I looked it up online and I said, that's the kind of marketing that I need to do. Our clients are 29 to 45 years old and they live on electronic communication. And I know this is hard to believe, but electronic marketing is more cost effective than marketing in print. Ouch, that hurt. That was highly uncalled for. You got to protect the local business relationship. We can't let that keep happening, all right? Hopefully your, your reps aren't operating blind. Do they know how their clients are spending their marketing budgets? Are they doing CNAs? Are they doing client needs analysis on a regular basis? Or are you spending all your money on outside research? Your reps are the best folks to get answers to questions like this. What the local marketplaces, how they're spending their marketing dollars. How are they allocating their marketing? Just get some percentages. How much in print? How much online? How much in direct mail? How much on web development? How much in billboards, cable TV, radio? Get the answer to that first question, the marketing allocation. Question number two, ask the advertiser, out of all that money you're spending, sir, let's focus on the digital now. How are you splitting up your digital marketing dollars? Are you doing e-commerce? Are you working with Groupon? Are you spending more money on email or maybe social media or SEO or SEM? Question number three, what kind of digital are you considering in the future? Who's approaching you? What type of stuff are they trying to sell you? What looks interesting to you? Then the fourth question and the final question, who's pitching you? What kind of people are calling you or knocking on your door or offering you a variety of marketing services? Get the answers to those four questions and guess what? You're going to be able to figure out what product mix to go to market with. Feel free to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on outside research, but right there, in your local market, your reps can get the answers to these four questions. And it's, it's very revealing when SMBs, that's small and mid-sized businesses, they're spending more money on those types of online marketing services. They're spending more money on that stuff than they are with traditional web advertising, like banner ads. Small businesses are using more digital more often. They're desperate for assistance. They need help. And they have multiple options. They are not beholden to one or two. They got plenty of choices. And they're getting pitched often. They're getting pitched all the time. Over 30 times a month. One of the big daddies going after them and doing a pretty good job is Google with their Get Your Business Online initiative. Coming on in, helping small businesses. This is powerful. 500, 600, 700 small businesses on a regular basis coming in and learning all about how to use Google and the internet to build their small business. And what the heck, it's beautiful. Local television, even though they're struggling with selling online advertising to their local advertiser base, local TV, great people, they're actually helping business. 
They're helping business understand the power and the benefit of Google. That's right. Local TV is helping the competition. Hmm. For many, Google has helped make life easier. And now Google is trying to make the Internet easier for small businesses. We're here to uh, help small businesses get online. It's estimated that over 50% of Connecticut small businesses have no online presence. Representatives from Google help business owners and entrepreneurs get connected through workshops and one-on-one -on -one instruction. It's not really that hard, but you know people don't know how to do it. So this is their chance to sit down with the experts and really go through it. Have you ever used YouTube at all? Connecticut Get Your Business Online attracted over 700 business owners and those planning on starting a business. So we're just in the early stages and the thinking stages. The thing's absolutely free and we're going to go to a couple workshops today and uh, hopefully come out of it with some good information to go forward with. The lesson of this event is that an effective online presence is essential to success in the 21st century. A lot of people are going to compete much more effectively in this global economy as a result of having the one-on-one -on -one help that they're receiving today. I can tell you a little bit more about it. We just get a lot of energy from seeing small businesses light up when they see their, their businesses be online. These business owners are hoping that energy translates to success in what is a challenging environment for small businesses everywhere. Ryan Hanrahan, NBC Connecticut News. Ah, uh, thank you, NBC. It's great helping out local businesses. And uh, I wonder if the salespeople are aware of what's happening. But it must be a one-off, just a coincidence, right? Just this one TV station was talking about the competition. There can't be other markets and other TV stations that would be so foolish as to promote on the evening news this thing called the Google, who wants to take away local advertising dollars, right? This is just a one-off coincidence, right? Come on. One of the biggest names in business is in Nashville this week. Google is here helping small business owners and entrepreneurs get online. News News' Jamie Tucker has a story that is positively Tennessee. They call that a conversion. You don't have to search for long to find entrepreneurs wanting help with their business. And just like most of us do when we're looking for information, these small business owners are Googling it. It's going to help you understand how people got to your website and what they did when they got there. Some of the information is it's basic. It's too painful. It's too painful. I can't watch it anymore. <laughs> Could you imagine the sales manager down the hall? if they knew this was happening, or maybe they just don't see the connection, like it's really something bad. But of course, newspaper. You know, a newspaper is also helping Google as well, man. I mean, when I saw the Los Angeles Times, the LA Times, the front page of the business section, talking about how Google's coming to town to help small businesses, building free websites for them. For them, Beautiful. Thank you, LA Times. I could have swore LA Times was also trying to help small businesses as well. Hmm. It's really important. You got to retain that relationship with the small business and, of course, the local resident, the community. Web 101 education is important and providing marketing services to the community. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I just did some work with Gannett in Delaware, in Wilmington, and the Newark area. Uh, the news journal, the newspaper down there in Wilmington, we did something called the Social Media Mashup. About 120 small businesses came in at the uh, courtyard down there. They did a great job. The social media mashup. Folks from LinkedIn were there. Uh, Google Plus is on the way. They're going to be doing some stuff. I was invited to moderate and focus on how to get all this stuff together and teach the small business how to monetize all these platforms, how to make money with this stuff. And we're all coming in. They're signing in. A, a great turnout, and it was spectacular. Uh, Holly Norton from the News Journal did a great job. She's the social media manager there. Uh, it really was a great time. Uh, look at that guy. I should have got a haircut before I started, but nonetheless, nobody seemed to take notice. The only weird thing about it was um, 120 advertisers in that room learning about the web. Uh, about half of these advertisers, about half of them were not print customers. We identified that 50% of the people in that room were not advertisers with Gannett. That's new business. Now, the one thing we didn't see was advertising reps, any sales reps from the local newspaper. We're pretty sure they weren't there, but we know one thing. We did see one rep from a competing media company in the room. They were getting leads. Kind of like shooting fish in a barrel, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, we also had some great success, though, with some, uh, some folks from, from CNHI, and that's the daily item. 
CNHI, a great newspaper group in small markets, about 100 papers. We're up there in central Pennsylvania with the uh, Chambers of Commerce. We put sites together to uh, get people on board to sign up and to register, and the small businesses come in. What do we use? We use WordPress to put a site together to let people know what they're going to learn when they attend, how they can register nice and easy. Look at all these smiling people from the Chambers of Commerce, all learning about Internet 101 from yours truly, Mel Taylor. And we used Eventbrite to have folks register and to have folks pay for a ticket. Eventbrite really, truly helped to get the word out. It's SEO optimized as well. We took all that information, all those email addresses, and pulled them into a database. Of course, we have a choice. We can put them into uh, one of my favorites, AWeber, or we could have put them into MailChimp or Constant Contact. we got to protect that local business relationship 